Howdy guys, welcome back to another itch.io free to play walkthrough. Today we have Halloween House Party on itch.io. As always, I'll leave a link to the game in the description if you want to check it out for yourself. And if you like the video, please like and subscribe, because I always appreciate that as well. Alright, let's crack into this. Why did I, why did I agree to this? I shouldn't have agreed to this. Three and a half years of intense academics and magical training, yet none of it could have prepared me for this moment. This could possibly be the worst decision I've ever made. Hey. This is it. The end of my life. Hey. I can feel the impending... Hello? Gods, I'm so nervous. I can't. don't even remember what my name is. What's my name again? Cordelia. Alright. Oh, I can change it. Boom. Yep, that's me, Fluffy Panda. <laughs> oh, it's another chick. I'm shaken out of my thoughts by the insistent. Oh, that's kind of quiet. By the insistent shouts of my roommate Ash, calling me for my attention. You were spiraling again, weren't you? No. Well, define spiraling. Fluffy Panda. Just because the chances of embarrassing myself are extremely high. Fluffy Panda. Which means I can never show my face in this town again. Fluffy Panda. <laughs> Which also means. I can't go to class, so I can't finish my degree, and I'm going to end up living alone under a rock for the rest of my life because I went into debt for nothing. <sighs> there are a ton of witches who live very fulfilling lives under rocks. Thank you. You know what I mean. You need to relax. It's just a party. That's the thing. I'm horrible at parties. The hot people, the loud music, the low mood lighting. Why did you convince me into coming? Convince me? You asked me to come. So much for Miss I Need to Get Out more. Yeah, she's dead and I killed her. So can I please go home? As if being a ghost could get you out of this party. Ash firmly grabs me by the shoulders and looks me dead in the eyes. Their stern gaze turns soft as they release a slight, exasperated sigh. <sighs> Fluffy Panda, I've seen you bust your ass the last four years and I'm really proud of you. But it's our senior year, and I don't think I've ever seen you go out and do anything. It's our last Halloween at the Solomon's Greater University of Sorcery and Craft. You deserve a night to just kick back and have fun. I... I don't know, Ash. Parties have never been my scene. How do you know that? When the last time you've been at to a house party? I don't know, when I was 15? But you don't understand watching Kate Chapman puke up that love potion at her sweet 16 really did something to my psyche. That was then, and this is now. Trust me, everything here is cool. Most of them are just a bunch of nerds from the scrapbooking club. From my scrapbooking club. And the rest are just friends of said nerds. Hmm. Give it 20 minutes. If you aren't having a good time after that, we'll broom them home and we can spend the rest of our Halloween watching spooky movies on Hexflix. Don't tempt me with a good time. Just promise you'll try. Ah. <sighs> okay. Ash smiles before pulling me into a tight hug. Ready? I take a deep breath as I stare to down the front door. The heavy ba uh, bass of the muffled music matches the pace of my racing car. I clench my fist before na nodding to Ash. Ready as I'll ever be. Then let's go. Alright. Ash opens the door and walks into a nearly packed living room. Clusters of people ebb and flow through the cluttered room. Not only holding drinks, but a variety of conversations. Well, there's a lot more people in the scrapbooking, scrapbooking than I thought. What can I say? The SGUC's SC's DIUY community is ever growing. Wow, you must be really proud of yourself. I am, thank you, and. But before they can finish their sentence, an excited looking Gorgon runs up to us. Ash, you're here! I told you I'd make it, I wouldn't miss this for the rest of the for this or any other world. I take it this is the roommate that you keep telling me about? Yeah, it's nice to meet you. My name is Fluffy Panda. Thanks for inviting me. You have a lovely home. Hey, no need to be formal. My name's Betty. Just make yourself at home. Drinks are in the kitchen. Mash app be five dollars if you plan to partake. Sick. Yeah, thank you. Let me know if you guys need anything. I gotta catch up with some other folks. 
Betty waves as she fades back into the chaos of the party. See, that wasn't so bad. Yeah, but that was just one person. I'm pretty sure we've met before and they just forgot. What? Why didn't you say something? I don't know. I panicked. Well, you won't have to worry about anything that, about that happening again because I'm pretty sure you haven't met anyone else. That's even worse. Relax, you got this. Grab a drink, mingle. I'll be around if you need help. Are you gonna leave me? You're just gonna leave me? What's this do? Ah. Save. Boom. The best kind of learning is to experience. You'll be fine, I promise. Just explore around, see if anything or anyone looks interesting. They give me a wink before logging into the first group of people they see and instantly joining the conversation like they're part of it to begin with. Well, it's just me now. I better start looking around. Howdy, girl. A small group of people stand around the table setting up what looks like a game of brew pong. I can't help but absentmindedly watch them align with all the cups on each side of the table. Maybe that could be fun. Shit, wait, is one of them coming this way? Fuck, I changed my mind. I can't play brew pong. Oh no, what do I do? You don't move, they can't see you. Hey! No, that's for dinosaurs! We need an extra player for Brew Pong. I saw you staring and you look pretty interested. Wanna join? M me? I've never even been to a party before, let alone play Brew Pong. Ah, huh, really? Wow! Well, ain't no time like the present. You can be on my team. Before I can protest, the demon takes my hand and guides me over to the table. Well, is it me or are your, her hands really hot? I mean, physically hot. I mean, she is also very attractive, but... Her name's Danny, by the way. Wait. Take a second to get a good look at them before it hits me. Danny? Like THE Danny? Just Danny, no the. No, I mean, you're the captain of the rugby team. Yeah, huh. I didn't think anybody here was really into sports. I'm usually not, but my roommate brought me to one of your games and I was hooked. You were totally on fire your last game. <laughs> yeah, they actually told me to stop doing that. But yeah, thank you. Honestly, I may play rugby, but my true passion is alcohol-related shenanigans. Me too, Danny. Jesus. Danny's my spirit animal. She yells as she winds up and throws a ball like a bat out of hell. Well, one of the hells. Really? No, not really. But it's really fun. Ready to learn how to play? Wow, she really goes a mile a minute. Huh? Sure. It's pretty easy. All you gotta do is get one of these balls into the other team's cups. If you land a shot, they lose that cup. And they have to take a drink. Same goes if they land a shot in one of any of our cups. Both teams go until... One of the teams is out of cups. Pretty straightforward, right? Yeah. Cool, wanna take a few practice shots? Sure. I sheepishly take one of the ping pong balls out and look at the display of cups. I have no idea what I'm doing. Why did I say yes? Maybe if I just throw it in, the gods will spare me and make it go into the cup. I close my eyes and release the ball from my grasp. It doesn't take long before I hit, it, hit the table and roll to a stop in front of the other team's cups. Wow, that was something. But your throat could use some work. Maybe, uh, try keeping your eyes open. Move your hand like this. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Danny slowly moves, maneuvers behind me and gently takes my hand as she moves into the right position. Holy shit. She's so close and so hot. Like, literally hot, but, like, also very sexy. And now, just let go. Then he guides my hand as a ball leaps from my hand and lands in one of the cups to the uh, to this side. Did that help? Very yes, thank you for the instruction. Look it, let's start then. We just gotta go grab some drinks. Oh, I can grab them for us. You sure? Of course. Yeah, if I don't get a break from all the heat, figuratively and literally, I might freaking explode. What do you usually like? Um, usually something spicy is good for me. Something spicy, got it. I walk away from the brew pong table and push my way back into the party. Wait, 
something spicy. I don't know about alcohol stuff. I don't know what spicy even means for a liquid. You want to get fireball, fireball, fireball. Well, I already pretty enthusiastically said I'd do it, so I better go get something, fireball. I wonder what's back there. Maybe a bathroom? Where's the drinks at? Gorgon said the drinks were in the kitchen, right? Hmm, I guess I'll give this a shot. Uh, oh, wow, these are made-up things. That's not good. Ha! Fireball! There we go, baby! Hmm, a regular red solo cup. Okay, I guess this will do, I guess. Wicked, thank you! I watched Danny take a sip from my poor attempt at mixology before giving me a smile and a thumbs up. Hey, I didn't do too bad, but I got a feeling- Oh God! Redo. What does she want? Fireball? You can only put three at a time? Okay. Hmm, a fire and a brimstone. Okay, I guess this will do, I guess. Oh man, is that an F and B? A uh, what? A fire and brimstone. I didn't even know we had stuff for it. How did you know this is all my all-time fave? Because you said you like spice. I know fireball, at least. Uh, save. Aha, my first lesbian relationship's going fantastic. And people say my soon-to-be potionology degree isn't good for anything. <laughs> well, if potionology makes you wick means you make wicked good drinks, I might have to switch majors. Well, potionology actually is the advanced study of understanding and mastering precise measurements of I'm just teasing you. Potionology ain't no joke. It's super cool that you, that's the path you decided for yourself. Ah, Danny's best girl. My face flushes at Danny's son's sincerity, and I turn away before she can see how flustered my face has gotten. Wow, well, thank you. Are you two ready to play or what? I look over to our opponent, a ghost and another demon, a patient waiting for our conversation to end. Can't keep them waiting, can we? Ready to play? <laughs> I think the real question you should be asking is if our portents are ready to be beaten. Yeah. Is that your first try at ta trash talk? Yeah, was it too much? A little wordy, but not bad. Stay paper, scissors to see who goes first. It's your first game. Want to do the honors? Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. You'll be fine. Frankie doesn't bite. Danny, stop giving strangers the wrong impression about me. You know I love biting people. Frankie flashes Danny a menacing smile while giggling. You tell him, babe. Oh, that's a girl. Thank you, Florence. Uh. Anyway, ready, steak, paper, scissors, shoot. Uh, paper. Oh, tie. That's two out of three? Uh, hurry up already, I might die. You're so impatient, then you can go first. Thank you, we will. Now I wanna win. Fuck! Aw, oh, babe. I won, I won! Wicked nice shooting, Fluffy Panda. Danny offers me a sick high five before giving me the little ball. We take the first shot. Don't worry, babe. We don't even need it. We're Brew Pong legends. Oh, 
Aw, oh, babe, you always just know what to know just what to say. You're a move, witch. Let's get started. Alright, here I go. This is the beginning of my brew pong legacy. All I gotta do is put this ball into one of the cups. Simple. There's like freaking ten of them. Super simple. But why can't I stop freaking out? I don't want to look like a loser chump in front of Danny, especially after she took the time to teach me. However, my body goes seems to perform on its own before I can quadruple guess myself. I don't feel the ball leave my hand, but I see it float through the air. I close my eyes before I can see where it lands. I'm too scared to look. Fluffy Panda. Oh no. You did it! I did? Yeah, you totally sunk that shot. I did it. I did a sport! I am a sportsman. Before I could fully process my success, Danny suddenly grabs my shoulders and starts shaking me excitedly. Fluffy Panda, you did it! I knew you had it in it, you! Well, whatever it is. I'm glad I have it. Well, keep going! Wait, I go again? Yeah, you go until you miss. Uh-oh. Oh, right. Sorry. Pick up another ball and expertly align my shot. It immediately goes wide, almost hitting someone as it bounces off a wall and out of sight. Whoa. Well, don't sweat it. We'll get him next time. Pretty wicked curveball, though. <laughs> nice. As Florence and Frankie get ready for their turn, a question dawns on me. You and Frankie seem to have a kind of rude, familiar banner going on. How do you know them? Are they more sports people? You think I only hang out with jocks or something? No, no, I... I'm kidding. Me, Florence, and Frankie are all in the same major. Believe it or not, Florence actually tutored me in one of our cl few classes. Whoa, really? What major is that? Hmm, what do you think? What do I think? I'm sorry, I really haven't found my much on divination while... <laughs> no, no, nothing like that. Just take a guess. A guess? Well, okay, let me think. Criminal justice. Oh, do I look like a sadist or something? Actually, let me... Oh, I don't think I can get it right. Alright, let's go with the first one. Whoa, do I look like a sadist or something? I'm trying to get all the good ends with all the characters. By the way, you play the field on... Uh, play on the field, maybe? Danny places a hand over her heart and gasps dramatically. <gasps> oh, that's low. That hurts. Anyway, if that's your guess, I should probably just tell you. I'm a demonology and maniacal philosophy major. Oh, wow, really? I always get that reaction. Is it that... Really that surprising? No, but I heard most of demonology they teach at SGUSC only covers basic concepts and principles. Well, uh, I wasn't always familiar with all the basic concepts and principles. My parents immigrated from the fourth circle before I was born. Everything I know about it came from them. Oh, if that's the case, what made you want to pursue it further? I guess... An unusually pensive look comes across Danny's face for a moment. I guess I felt like I was missing something. Like there was a part of me that I didn't understand. And even if now it's just the beginning of that, I wanted to figure out what it was. Do you think you figured it out? Yeah. I think I have. And that's the game! Breaking floors shouted smugly across the table. What? Oh. I look over to see a ball in literally every single one of our cups. You guys look like you were having such a nice conversation. We didn't want to butt in. Better down them drinks, losers. Danny glares at her two friends before haphazardly grasping her cup and raising it in the air. Hey! Slams her other hand on the table, stares intensely at Frankie and Florence. Good game, guys. Oh, come on. We totally cheated. The point is to drink, Frankie. Even if you lose in brew pong, you still win. Fluffy Panda? Danny turns to me and gives me a look that I can't make sense of, but she's smiling. I smile back and raise my shitty plastic cup with her. Are we supposed to yell something now? Uh, sure, you want to make a toast right now over the sticky brew pong table? Well, when you say it like that... <laughs> she lets out a laugh like a bat out of hell. 
<laughs> this is a really great laugh. I don't know. We smash our cups together and I watch as Daddy swallows through nearly one gulp. He crashes the cup with a newfound fire in her eyes. Claire's down her flanking and Florence before jumping on the table. She leaps towards them, phasing right through Florence and tackling Frankie to the ground, trapping her in a headlock. Hey! Oh, Danny, you know that doesn't work on me. Florence, babe, help me! Sorry, right, babe. I'm gonna keep out of this and stay in Corporal for a hot second. Ah! This is what you get for cheating. You're toast, Dantelian. Florence laughs as Frankie tries to wrestle out of Donny Danny's arm as all three of them relentlessly tease each other. I can't help but smile at them. I thought they didn't like Frankie Danny at first, but at maybe this is just how Frankie and Florence show their affection. With aggressive, playful rudeness. My gaze lingers on Danny, surrounded by her friends. I can't help but wonder. Would it be weird if I joined them? I wander off of my thoughts, giving the rowdy bunch of space while I check out the rest of the party. Oh, I don't... Oh, I don't get to pick a best ending? I already talked with her. I think I'll just enjoy her drink for now. I'm gonna make some alcohol too. Jeez, I'll go back. All these drunk people around this flimsy furniture makes me nervous. There's a fashionable fishing girl looking, standing next to the speakers on her phone. Maybe she's in charge of the music. With all the courage I can muster, I walk over and try to get her attention. Uh, are you in charge of the music? Depends. Who's asking? Her voice was rhythmic and smooth, like the shore of a beach at low tide, which is to say, it was very sexy. Is this someone looking to, uh, request a song? Merfolk finally looks up from her phone and stares at me for a moment before smiling. Sure thing, hon. But it might be a while before you get to hear it. Huh. Gotta respect the law of the queue, even for queue witches. She smiles and winks at me. I, uh, who? Before I could fumble my words again, something catches onto my leg and I stumble forward. Whoa. But I don't hit the floor. I pull my head up and look down to see I've just fallen on this super hot stranger. This is the worst night of my life. Oh my gods. I jump off her, nearly tumbling backwards. I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm so... Wait. She squints at me before breaking into a toothy grin. I know you. You're in my divination class. I... I am? With Professor Bloomlight, she moves to stand, and now only now do I notice how wonderfully tall she is. She dusts herself off and gives me a cheerful look. I'm Bermuda, by the way. You're in the 130 lecture every Tuesday and Thursday, right? Uh, yeah, I am, but it's such a big lecture, I'm surprised you remember my face. Have you seen your face, hon? It's pretty memorable. Oh, I, uh... Oh, oh, thank you. I don't believe I ever got your name. Fluffy Panda. It's... It's Fluffy Panda. Fluffy Panda. Oh, that's lovely. Is this really happening? Is she flirting with me? Even after all I fell on her? Like some half brute idiot? She is flirting with me, right? Or was it... Wait, is it... She just liked that. Okay, all I have to do is keep the conversation going. How do I keep a conversation going? Questions, right? I just need to ask a question. That's what flirting is, right? So... Ah. Uh, I really like your music, the music you, that you chose. Aw, thank you. I hate to be like that, but I insisted Betty let me curate the music this time. This time? What happened last time? The guy who was in charge last time was a huge fan of ancient Gregorian... Gregorian chants. Oh. To be fair, their newer stuff is a lot better. Oh my gods, wait. I never apologized to her. We're flirting and I haven't apologized. I'm so sorry. Excuse me? 
I fell on you earlier. I never apologized. I'm so sorry. Oh, that? It wouldn't be the first time someone's fallen for me. Really, don't worry about it. She flourishes her hand in an elegant motion and gives me a wink. I try to respond, but all I manage is a fluster squeak. But if you really want to make it up for me, you could grab me a drink. Uh, oh, of course, I'd be happy to. Something refreshing would be fantastic, he says with a wink. I hurry off toward the kitchen, but... Wait, something refreshing? What does that mean? I don't know about alcoholic stuff. Well, I already said I'd do it, so I better go get it. Bro, freaking Yuri romances are like the actual best. Um, I guess I'll give this a shot. That for sure. There must be three couples I can get with. Ah, you're supposed to do it like now. Well, this doesn't really have alcohol in it at all. Alright, I'm gonna try this, see what happens. Um, a, the Dead Sea. Okay, I guess this will do, I guess. Oh, you're back. I was beginning to worry. I would have sit, had to send out a search party. So sorry it took so long. I'm only teasing, hon. Don't worry. I sheepishly smile before presenting Bermuda with her drink. Oh my goodness, this is perfection. Thank you. Really? The sea salt wasn't too much? No, I think it was very thoughtful. You must have a real sense for these sort of things. What's your secret? My secret? How'd you guess being able to perfectly capture the test of someone you just met? Surely you have a method. I'm an alcoholic. Uh, well... No secret, only pure, undulterated talent. I would love to see what other things your talent can mix up. Oh, uh, thank you, haha. <laughs> Bermuda tilts her head, making a nearly imperceptible deduction. You don't have to thank me every time I compliment you. You might have been posturing, but it's true. Oh, uh, well, thank you. Muta raises a bemused eyebrow in my direction. I mean, I appreciate that. So what are you doing out tonight? You seem a little out of your element. W what makes you say that? I'm a regular fish out of water myself. One gets a sense for these things, a vibe if you will. You have a similar vibe as, oh, what's her name in our class? Oh, let me guess, I'm like, Joan Hayworth? Oh my gosh, I don't think anybody can be as uptight as her. Try this one. Professor Bloomlight's TA? Hi, uh, yeah, that girl really needs to take a nap or to get laid. Maybe she's too afraid to. It's hard to date when you're in divination. So true. One slip up and suddenly you're telling your partner how they're going to die in seven days. <laughs> but I suppose some people might find that sexy. Muta throws her arm over her forehead while dramatically clutching her chest. We might die tomorrow, so take me tonight. <laughs> You're right, not my best work. You know, that actually reminds me of my brother back home. Oh, really? He means well, but he's always been a bit of a pill. Everyone on land seems slate back by comparison. Wow, really? Honestly, I don't know how much fun I could have until I transferred to an overwater school. I'm sure you might find it boring, but it's all a spectacle to me. Fire, your fire is different from ours. I love it. Hmm, oh, in the sun. It's so much brighter above water. I remember the first time I saw your sunset. My old roommate took me up on a bloom at twilight. I don't think I've seen anything more beautiful. 
Oh yeah, that's the first thing I did when I got my broom license too. I was very lucky to receive the opportunity to study abroad or two. <laughs> Thank the gods for scholarships, right? Bermuda holds her upper drink and I, I lightly tap it against mine. She's silent for a moment as if she's lost in thought or maybe I'm not talking enough. I'm not quite sure how to read her yet, but I want her to think I'm not interested. Don't want her to think I'm not interested in what she's saying. So, your family must have been pretty excited about those scholarships, huh? Oh, I wish it were so simple. They nearly choked when I told them I was going to the school on land. Really? They thought I was ruining my life. Everyone thought I was ruining my life. My brother was initially very supportive, but... <sighs> Sometimes you need to be your own cheerleader, your own advocate. That's not true. That's true. If not you, then who will? Exactly. I'm glad you understand what I'm trying to say. Thank you. Oh, uh, of course. Hmm. I'm gonna ha go have a smoke. She smiles as she gestures towards the porch door. Another perk of being on land. I hope you don't mind. You're welcome to come with me. Is that what you mean by loving fire? Partially, but it's one of, not one of those cigarettes. Oh. Oh, I got you. I got it. I'm cool. It's not seaweed. Oh. I'll only be a few minutes. Come find me when you're done. I'll probably be here. Her thing, hon. Bermuda gives me a wink before gliding away towards the door. Wait. What other things are there besides seaweeds and cigarettes? My gaze lingers on Bermuda. She blends into the party and I feel a wave of loneliness wash over me. I only feel out of place. Maybe I should leave. Find myself alone among the crowd. Uh, we got one relationship left. It looks like those two are having a pretty intense conversation. I wonder what they're talking about. Her sister was a witch, right? And what was her sister? A princess? I'm gonna stab you. You are gonna sit there and tell me I'm wrong? Just back away slowly. Might be best to leave them to it. Hey, Tree. I've heard of apple in my eye, but this is, does this count? Red plastic cups, now you know it's a party. I wonder who's reading The Count of Monte Corso. I love that book. I should probably finish it sometime. I've, well, I love the book Monte, The Count of Monte Corso too. One of the number one revenge stories of our time. Kinda hard to move the screen a little bit. Wow, a full moon on Halloween. When's the last time that happened? If only I could be home reading. Yeah, I love your relationships. They're so assertive and it's it's nice. It's refreshing. Oh, what cute and perfectly normal plants. Where do people find all this cute stuff? No time to check out myself out. It's time to mingle. An intimidating vampire is leaning against the wall looking out the window, twirling what looks like a set of keys in her hands. I wonder why she's standing by herself. Is she here alone? She gives me a passing glance before looking back out the window again. Whoa, she seems really cool. Am I sure I can handle this? Okay, okay, you can do this. I'm a cool arm? What is wrong with me? Thanks. Oh shit, wait, is this working? Your tattoo on that. That's Kissy Snake, right? You know Kissy Snake? Oh uh, yeah, I'm Fluffy Panda, by the way. You know, I've seen a ton of snakes through the years, and Kissy Snake easily in my top five snakes. There's a long pause before she effortlessly pushes herself off the wall and gives me a thorough look. Maybe this was a bad idea. The long silence is broken by the vampire letting out a soft chuckle. Hmm, you're funny. Huh? I know I come off can come off a little intense. Sorry if I gave you a bad impression. You can call me Theo. 
yeah, Theo, it's nice to meet you. The pleasure is mine. I'm glad you came up to me, Fluffy Panda. Really? I tend to blend into the shadows at these sort of things. It's a bad habit. Oh yeah, I'm a bit of a wallflower too. Oh no, I literally blend into the shadows. I'm a vampire. Oh. So how do you know the host? Oh, I don't. My roommate Ash brought me here. She pauses for a moment. Ash Blightgrove? Yeah, you know them? Oh, so you're Ash's roommate. Oh, they've mentioned me? Ash and I both have ethics and decom decomposition with Professor Snacklebranch. Oh yeah, I've heard them complain about that one. They said all the tests are nothing but extended response questions? Correct. Instead of studying the ethics of decomposition, we should be studying the moral implications of this, his class being so difficult. Huh. Theo looks at me confused. That was, uh, that was funny. Oh, I wasn't trying to be humorous. That man's class can be le legally be classified as torture. But he's a tenured professor, so there's not much anyone can do. Oh. I swear, though, the last time I was in school... Oh, the last time? Yes. As in, you've been to college before? Oh, I've been to college many times. Whoa, and you keep coming back? Excuse me. Uh, hmm. Knowledge is always evolving, and I like to learn. Wait, hold on. How many degrees do you have? She pauses for a moment. Excluding this current one? Four. You fart now naturally. Oof, I can't imagine. But before I can think of something interesting about my own life to say, a shout reverberates loudly across the house. You're fucking dead! Theo coolly cocks her head and looks out across the room. A heated conversation before a werewolf and a zombie in the unliving room has suddenly turned physical. A few partygoers try to flee from the carnage, but the rest begin crowd crowding around the two brawlers and start chanting. I can hear what's-her-name, Betty, screaming from the back of the crowd. I said, no fights! Outside! Inside! You want to fight? Take it to the fight pit! In the backyard! Her scalding is drowned out by the room's rising chaotic energy. Suddenly, the werewolf and the zombie tumble across the room and land on near our feet with a violent flood. Thud. Theo seems unfazed, but I recall as a spare claw rips through the air and tears my pant leg. I nearly trip back up the stairs, but a strong pair of cold arms catch catches me from behind. Theo? She doesn't say anything as she steadies me on the landing. She glances down at my leg and then at the fight below us with a strange look in her eye. Oh gods, what should I do? Should I be doing something? Watch. I, I've never seen a fight before, but isn't this what college is all about? Watching two people drunkenly fight each other over unimportant horseshit? Uh, hey Theo, does this sort of thing happen to a lot of parties? But when I turn to my side, Theo isn't there. Wait, what? Did she do her shadow thing? I scan the crowd before the eyes land on a blur of people surfacing into the middle of the fight. The two brawlers pause as Theo makes herself known and hush whispers travel through the crowd. <laughs> the werewolf straightens himself out and stands at his full height before sizing her up. The hells? You think this is an open fight or something? Get out of the way! I got a specific bone to pick with this deadbeat. A deadbeat? Seriously? Grow up, bro. She glances quickly at both of them before turning her head to the werewolf. Bring it off, Bradley. Stay out of this. David's been stealing my bones again. I dig holes, and I put bones in the holes. Man, that's what I do. They're my bones, Bradley. Or, they're my bones, Bradley. Just because you found it before I was risen doesn't mean you get to keep it. Look, Dave, you got your rib back. Just get out of here. No. No, fuck you. Oh, wait, I'm... Oh. No, fuck you. 
With the growl, Bradley lunges toward the zombie on the ground, but Theo quickly puts herself between them as she catches Gra Bradley by his short collar and lifts him off the ground. You're making a scene, Brad. The werewolf continues to claw in G David's general direction, only restrained by Theo's natural vampiric strength. Uh, thanks, Theo. The zombie hastily picks himself up off the ground, readjusting one of his lower ribs into the correct place as he turns to leave. Fuck you, Brad. I'm out of here. The werewolf snarls as he loses sight of David in the crowd. You're dead meat, Theodosia. Have been for a while, Brad. Now go home. You're interrupting my evening. With a decisive motion, she drops the werewolf on the ground and he falls to the floor with a defeated thud. They look lock eyes for a moment before Bradley resentfully ri fully rises and disappears into the party as the crowd disperses. Oh, oh my god. Theo saunters back over to me like nothing happened. What? That was incredible! Uh, oh, you think so? Well, I can just stand by while y you know. I'm suddenly reminded of the small rip on the bottom edge of my jeans. Oh, right. You paused and maybe waiting for me to say more? It was uncuffed. Wow, Theo, you're like a regular knight in shining armor. Huh. Does that make you the beautiful princess? It's silent for a moment before she coughs to clear the air, a purely symbolic gesture since five vampires don't need to breathe. Well, after all that, I think I could use a drink. Me too, definitely. Do you want me to grab one for you? Oh, sure, just keep in mind my, uh, dietary restrictions. Oh, of course, it's no trouble. I mean, you did kind of just fight a werewolf for me. He slighted your honor. What was that? What would you like? I said something strong would be nice. Got it. Something strong. I'll be right back. Thanks, Fluffy Panda. Wait, something strong? Wow, I just realized I have no idea what that means. Well, I already kind of said I'll do it. Let's hope I can mix something up. I got you, girl. We squad. We fam. I make the drinks you frickin' get with all your waifus. Hmm, I'll give this a shot. Hmm, I'm blood and water. Okay, I guess this will do, I guess. I cautiously walk over to Theo's drinks in hand. Um, here's your drink, Theo. I hope it's strong enough. Think. Wait. Is this blood in the water? Yes? No? Uh, well, Lady Luck has fine taste. Oh, I don't believe in luck. Least of all, abstract anthropomorph anthropomorphic mythical physical manifestation of one with the concept of gin. Oh, curious. Then where did you learn to make this? Oh, you know, places from people. Wow, very intriguing and specific. These places and people must have been very skilled. The, they are, I learned from the best, haha. Theo stares at me with a smirk on her face. I can't take this. I'm sorry, I lied. No. Oh, I like secrets. Huh? Is there any special reason it's a secret? Did you make a pact with some kind of deity to gift you the treasures of this hidden knowledge? Oh, oh, of course not. Making pacts can get you e expelled. And did you take a vow of secrecy with your mentor? No, no. I've got it. It's a curse, isn't it? Oh, God. No, I'm not. I'm only cursed with being a liar because I'm lying. I didn't learn this from anyone. I just guessed. Ah, huh, I know. I'm just messing with you. Theo smiles and takes a sip from her drink. 
So, you said you've been to college a few times? Yes, four times. Is that a lot for vampires? I know a few who've gone, skull, gone to school upward of ten times. It depends on the person. Huh, but... Other than your love of learning, why'd you come back? Theo thinks for a moment before sipping from her drink. I suppose it just seems like the thing you're supposed to do. You do something for a while, and then you get bored of it. So you learn to do something else. I guess so. I guess if I had all the time and resources to do it, I'd definitely want to learn as much as I could. Maybe even do some good with it. It's harder said than done, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. We sit together in a moment of silence before I see Theo turn her head toward the moonlight creeping in through the window. Is something out there? Oh yes, sorry. I see her tense up for a moment as a slight blush covers, up, covers her cheek. Actually, I... It clears her throat again. <laughs> again, symbolically. You want to go for a ride? Uh, uh, a ride? Like on what? On my bike. Y your bike? Oh, oh, I, I don't know how. It's just, I get sweaty really easily and... What? No, no, like on my, hmm, motorbike. Motorbike? Like a motorcycle? Yes. You have a motorcycle? Yes. A and you want me to go for a ride on your motorcycle? Yes. I if you'd like to. I'd love to. I'd love to. This is so exciting. Right. Theo blushes as hard as she fumbles around in her pockets. Let me just grab my ki- before, But before Theo can finish the thought, I feel a familiar tap on my shoulder. Hey, nerds. Theo, I didn't think you were gonna make it tonight. Out tonight. It's good to see you. Oh. Ash. Hey, likewise. Do you mind if I steal my roomie for a second? Ash. No, it's okay. I need a second to, uh, find the extra helmet. I, I think I get to pick between the three, and I want to pick all three, because I actually like all of them. I think Danny's my favorite, but... Ooh, are you going out on your bike? You know it's all she talks about, right? Ash. Okay, I'm going now. G going to find the helmet. Ash pulls me away as I watch Theo blend into the crowd, but I get a strange feeling. Is Theo okay? So... What do you think? Are you having fun? Y yeah, I think so. I would sure hope so. I saw you chatting it up with Danny, Bermuda, and Theo. I know, right? If I knew our leaving our apartment meant I could, would get hit on by cute girls, I would have left ages ago. Right? Dude, I literally introduced you to people as my hot roommate who had never leaves the house. You have a reputation. Oh, that's the wing girl right there. Why in the world would you introduce me as your hot roommate to strangers? Because it's true. Anyway, I think the party is starting to wind out a little. If you want to spend some more time with the special somebody, I get on that. It's a somebody special. Don't you see that's over-exaggerating? No, they're all totally into you, dude. Oh, who's it gonna be? Nash looks at me expectantly. Just hold on. This is a lot of pressure. Danny, she sure is larger than life. She can be hard, kind of hard to keep up with, but I can tell just whatever she does. She really puts her heart into it. I feel so inspired just being around her. Bermuda is in a league of her own. She seems so effortlessly chic and easygoing. You'd think she never had a care in the world, but she has a lot going on beneath the surface. And I feel like she really brings out a side of me that I didn't know I had. Theo is such an enigma. I feel like I could get a, can't get a good read on her. The more I learn about her, the more intrigued I become. But under the aloof facade and cryptic aura, I feel real kinship with her. Hmm, I think I'll end the night with... Danny this time. Save. 
I'll give the best girl word, word after I see the endings because they're all pretty tied. I think Bermuda's my least favorite and Theo's second favorite, but they're all really good. I had a lot of fun with Danny tonight. She's really cool and nice. Probably the pol polar opposite of me, but I feel like that's part of what makes her so fun to be around. Ooh, I never thought of you as the jockey type, Fluffy Panda. Me neither, but what can I say? She really looks good in that varsity jacket. You don't have to tell me twice. I'm the one that invited you to those games, remember? Anyway, Fluffy Panda, I'm really proud of you. You really put yourself out there tonight. Thanks, Ash. Now go get her! Yeah! Where's she at? Danny! My girl! Gone! Gone! Where am I supposed to go? By the time I hurry back over to the table, it's been wiped clean and all the cups are gone. Huh, I wonder where everyone went. I squint around the crowd looking for Danny, Frankie, and Florence. A pit begins to form in my stomach. I hope she didn't leave. What happened? I thought... Before I can finish the thought, I feel something smooth brush against my leg under the table. Huh? Is that someone's tail? Grab it. Uh... Danny? She instinctively lifts her head and jump. the table jumps from the force of her horns against the cheap plywood. Ow, shit! Oh no! I crouch down to meet her under the table among the various grimy party debris. Danny, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to startle you. No, you're fine. Sorry, I'm kinda... What did you say? Sorry, I'm kinda focusing on something. What's the something? Is everything okay? Yeah. Really? No, sorry. I don't know why I lied about that. I lost my scare pods. Your scare pods? You mean those little headphones? Yeah, I know it sounds trivial. Excuse me. But they're really important and expensive. Ugh! Sorry, I'm just really frustrated right now. You just lost them? I'm sure they're around here somewhere. I can help you look. What? No way. This is your first party. I don't want you to waste the rest of your night looking for my stupid scare pods. Hey. They're important to you. They're not stupid. Oh. For a moment, Danny and I locked me eyes beneath the beer pong table. They're along with the old gun, half empty cups, crusty snack wrappers, and stray sticky residue of alcohol. Danny suddenly didn't have anything to say. Oh, oh, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have told you how to feel. I'm... No. Danny interrupts my babbling with the most sincere smile I've ever seen. It makes my heart feel... It makes me feel like my heart could be melted into a fucking ingot. Thank you. You're right. Uh, oh, uh, uh, of course. I'm not used to thinking about my shit very earnestly. Thank you for offering to help. Yeah, just, uh, tell me what they look like. Yeah, they're just the classic white scare pods. I don't have the case for them anymore, so they're kind of easy to lose. Don't worry, we'll find them. Where did you last see them? I don't remember, but they're definitely in this room for sure. Okay, I'll go have a look around. Thank you, Fluffy Panda. Pair of scare pods. They're tiny. This might be a tough one. Oh my god, I'm so drunk. This is gonna be hard, actually. That can't. Oh no, that's a different camp. Maybe she set them down on the shelf and forgot. God, I know that I've done that a million times. I carefully looked through the books and knickknacks, but nothing. But I get the feeling they're close. These plants look perfectly normal and not very menacing. Is it even fair for me to suspect them? Huh. I check their pots and underneath the leaves, taking extra care with the plants. That's just sort of a mouth with teeth. Okay. Still no scare pods. What a beautiful night to not let someone down. Let's keep looking. I get the feeling they're close by. I don't think they're going to be glued to the wall or anything. It's pretty shaggy. Maybe it's lost in this fluffiness. 
I get down on my hands and knees and start scanning the rug, bumping into a few people along the way. So sorry, I'm looking for something. I'll just be a second. Ah! I try to shimmy out of someone's way when I finally feel something hard beneath my palm below the rug. Something under there? I quickly scoot over the corner of the rug, lifting the edge up to get a better look. And among the few errant pieces of lint and dust, I see a set of white wireless earbuds laying next to an old bottle, bottle cap. I found them! I quickly snatch the scare pilots from under the rug with a triumphant smile. I better get these back to Danny. I found them. Let's hurry back and give these to Danny. I rush back over to the brew park table to find Danny half sumped over its edge. She looks really upset. These seem really important to her. She gives me a solemn glance before looking back out to the party. You had any luck? Luck has nothing to do with it. Magic is real, but luck is fake. What? Sorry, this is a hotly debated topic within which I academia. Which is to say, I found your scare pods. Oh my gods. I hold out the scare pods to Danny and she looks at them with a sense of pure awe. Thank you so much. Oh, it's really no problem. Oof. Suddenly I find myself in the tight, warm, and earnest embrace of Danny's arm. Thank you. She says it differently this time. Soft and gentle. It seems so different like this when she's so close. I wrap my arms around her. I don't remember the last time I got a hug like this. It's really nice. We finally pull away and Danny turns her head away from me quickly. Wait, is she blushing? Wait, am I blushing? Shit! Say something! Uh... So, uh, is there a reason they're so important? Not about the headphones, idiot! Oh... Um... Yeah! Yeah! I actually got all my textbooks on my phone as audiobooks. I usually listen to them while I'm working out and stuff. I, um, probably wouldn't get any work done without them. You don't have the textbooks? I have some of them, but I don't really use them. I have a hard time focusing on stuff like that. Uh, I don't know. It's just one of those things. We don't gotta get into it. No, it's okay. Danny, I'm here if you want someone to listen. Thanks, Fluffy Panda. It's cool as tough. It's always been hard for me. It's just one of those things. Professors look at my grade and think I don't care, that I'm just some meathead here to play rugby on a scholarship. I can sit down and try to look at a book or a screen for hours, but I just can't learn that way. I've had a lot of lousy conversations with teachers over the years about it. It's a little better in college, but I don't know. Do you ever feel like so no one sees how hard you're trying? Great someone reflect your worth. Huh, tell that to my folks. Here's how I think of it. As long as you pass, you still get the same degree as everyone else. But regardless of your grades, you should feel proud. I can tell you work really hard no matter what you're doing. Even if your best isn't good enough for some people, I think it still counts for something. But I'm not real- I'm really not the best at giving advice, and I don't want to act like I know your whole life. Eh, sometimes it helps to hear another perspective. Thanks, Fluffy Panda, you're a nice gal. Danny and I talk a while longer, lost in our own conversation before we realize it, the party has begun to die down around us. But even if I missed out on the rest of the party, it was nice. I find Ash outside on the porch saying goodbye to a few friends. Hey, are you ready to go? Not yet, I wanted to find Dan- But before I could finish that thought, Danny walks out onto the porch with Frankie and Florence. Frankie is draped over Danny's shoulder and rambling about something under her breath. Oh hey Fluffy Panda, I was looking for you. Really? Yeah, I wanted to say bye before we took off. Thanks for helping me find my scare pods, it was fun hanging out with you tonight. 
Oh, yeah, you too. Well, hope I see you around. Just like that, Danny was gone. All I could do was wave as she and her friends walked off to, into the night. I really hope I get the opportunity to see her again soon. Well, maybe next time. What? What? Did I get the bad ending? Son of a bitch! I'm gonna try the other ending to see if they sit in similarly with us not hooking up. Damn, I was really into that relationship. I thought that was going well. Huh. Need to close some things. My uh, video is starting to lag. hurt me. I was like, I thought that was going like perfect. Alright, load. Did I get a gallery or nah? No, I did something wrong. Or maybe it's not out yet. CG's coming in a future release. Check out... Let's try the other one, see if I get a better ending. Maybe I did something wrong, I don't know. Bermuda. Bermuda seemed really into me tonight, or maybe she's just like that. Is she just like that? That shrugs. But from what I saw, she seemed really interested, really into you. I think, I think I'm gonna go for it. Hell yeah you are. I'm so proud of you, dude. Now get your ass laid. Yeah, I wanna get laid, what? Ash excitedly put, pushing me toward the last place they saw Bermuda. Geez, I wouldn't go as far as getting laid, but maybe just her phone number? I made my way back to where Bermuda and I were talking earlier, but she's not back yet. A pit begins to form in my stomach. I hope she didn't leave. As I begin to shimmer my way through the crowds toward the porch, I spot Bermuda by the speakers. Huh? Did she already take her break? I scoop past a group of ghouls, ghouls and rush over to her. Wow, that was fast. But she doesn't seem to notice me. Is she looking for something? Hey. Hey, uh, Bermuda? Bermuda's eyes shoot up at me. Her brows are furrowed in a, to an intense expression. Oh no, are you okay? No. I lost it. Lost, lost it? Lost what? My ghoul. Your what? My ghoul. I apologize. Yelling was completely uncalled for. I just I can't find my ghoul. So what does it look like? I don't know. Like a ghoul? Okay, I'll help you look for it. I'm on the case. Really? Thank you, Fluffy Panda. Please let me know if you found it. And after a quick Google search, I was ready to look for this thing. Who knew they made electronic cigarettes wild? I'm sure it couldn't have gone too far, right? It's cool you can see music on the TV. I can't put my wand on it, but this tree is giving me a weird look. It won't take its eyes on me, like even more aggressive than usual. It's giving me the creeps. Huh, okay. I crouch down to peer inside the port and part of the leaves to get a better look. Wait, is that? It is. I hope so at least. It's like a little stick. It kind of looks like something you keep pencil lead in or a flash drive. This has to be it. I pull my head out of the plant and it rustles in this pot, blinking rapidly at me. Did you steal this? It looks away. Hey. Well, whatever. Let's go back to Bermuda. What happens if I talk to Danny? Okay. I found it! I hurry back over to Bermuda, who's still frantically looking under pillows and inside plants for a small electronic cigarette. Geez, for someone who comes off so cool and collected, she's really frantic about this. 
When Bermuda finally realizes I'm there, she sees the item in my hand and makes a noise somewhere between a relief and excitement. Squee! <laughs> oh, thank gods. Thank you. You really saved my tail. I had to find it, knowing your tail was in jeopardy. You have no idea. My brother found out I lost it and it had a party no less. Your brother? My my brother bought me this. As a going away gift, he knew I was into this sort of thing, though we weren't exactly on speaking terms at the time. But as it is, it's the only thing I really have from home. Oh well, that was really very thoughtful of him. Muta makes some noise that sounds like she's agreeing with me as she stares sadly at her gold. He was the only person in my corner. At the moment I told him I was serious about going to school on land, I don't know what happened. He suddenly had all these ideas about what I should do. It's so frustrating, I can't t I can take care of myself. Well, if that ghoul is any indication, I think he does support you. You said he gave it to you after your falling out? That's right. Maybe it, that was his way of apologizing, of showing he supports you. She pauses for a moment. It certainly was an apology, but I don't think I was ready to accept it. And now I'm thousands of leagues away. We stand in silence, leaning against the wall as we watch the party go on past us. Finally, Bermuda breaks the silence. Have you felt angry at someone you sh would do anything to see? Bermuda only nods in response. We sit together in silence, watching the party begin to slow down. Bermuda has shifted the mood of the music into a funky low vibe, as people casually chat and nurse their late dr last drinks. I find Ash outside on the porch, saying goodbye to a couple of their friends. Hey, I was wondering where you were. Are you ready to go? Yeah, I just wanted to find Bermuda before we... Hello. Like some kind of summoning spell, Bermuda appears behind me just as I'm about to say her name. I had a great time with you tonight, Fluffy Panda. Thanks for finding this for me. Bermuda holds up her gold before putting it back on her pocket. Oh yeah, of course. She gave me a small wave and she, as she joined the group getting into a car. I'll see you in class. No, me too. What? All I could do is watch as the car drove off into the distance. I couldn't shake the feeling that we were both hoping for more. What the fuck? <laughs> I don't. I, I think this is like just setting the groundwork. I think there's probably going to be a sequel where I can actually get with the girls. But I don't think I could have picked any better answers than that, to be honest. I think this is supposed to be a cliffhanger for the future. And I love this game. I love the relationships. I hate the cliffhangers, because I feel like if you played it right enough, I don't know if I did something wrong, but I feel like I played it right enough that I should get something from it. Oh well. And I could be wrong, hopefully somebody will let me know if there actually is good endings, but I don't think there is in the game yet. But we're gonna do our last one with Theo, we'll see if anything changes, but if it's the same thing, I'm pretty sure I was right. And I will definitely check out future games by this creator. I love this visual novel. I've been playing this for like an hour and ten minutes, but it doesn't feel like it. It's been going by super fast because I love the relationships and reading about it. And if the video is a little bit laggy, I apologize. I don't know why. Probably need to restart my computer because I keep getting like a encoding overload, which I usually don't get. But I'm too deep <laughs> to fix it now. And it says CG's coming in a future release, so I guess it's just not out yet. Theo. I can't explain why, but there's something so easy about being around Theo. Maybe we just focus, function on a similar wavelength? Huh, you think so? I guess I can kinda see that. Theo may come off sorta of intense, but I think you're not far off the mark. I say go for it. You really think she's into me? She's not the kind of girl who wastes her time. Has she talked to you more than 30 seconds? Y yes and she definitely wants you, dude. Ash. Now get over there, you have a motorcycle to ride. 
Ash gives me two thumbs up before pushing me into the crowd and back towards the staircase. Jeez. You lost your keys. I hurry back over to Theo, who seems to be rummaging, rummaging through her pockets rather feverish, feverishly. Hey. Uh, is everything okay? And excuse me. Yes, yes, everything is fine. I eye her skeptically as she starts ripping through some trash that had been thrown down the stairs. Um, are you sure? Of course. It just seems as though I might have indirectly, possibly, accidentally misplaced my keys. What? Weren't you twirling them around earlier? Hiccups. I probably lost him during my confrontation with Brad Thornton. Thornton? Oh, you mean the werewolf? Yes, who knows where they are now. I could help look. Oh, there's no, really no need to trouble yourself. Well, it might be easier with another set of eyes. If you'd like, I wouldn't want to preoccupy your evening. Oh no, it's no big deal. I'm really happy to help. Well, thank you, Fluffy Panda. The sooner we locate them, the sooner I can take you for, out for that ride. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So, is there anything on them? What do they look like? Right, and it'll have some charms on the side. You can't miss them. Perfect, I'll get looking. Theo gives me a small nod before returning to search by the staircase. Hmm, a set of keys. That isn't too bad. They can't have gone far. These are still super cute, but they aren't keys. You know what? These plants don't look normal at all. In fact, I would say they look incredibly guilty and suspicious plants. Hey, wait a second. I squint as light reflects off something shiny poking out of the mouth of the plant on the right. And I swear it's, I see it snicker at me. Well, I don't like that. It looks really mean and full of teeth, but Theo needs those keys back. But please don't bite me. I slowly let my hand approach the toothy plant, carefully reaching for part of the keyring but stuck beneath his teeth. Eek! The plant snaps his jaw, jostling in his pot. God, I swear it's laughing at me. It wiggles back and forth violently, shaking its leaves at me in anticipation. Yeah, well, I don't like you either. I think your leaves are dumb. How about that? It sneers before spitting at me with its dumb face. Hey. Wait, hey. It spit out the keys. They're covered in plants of saliva, but this is, has to be them. Time to get these back to Theo. I should let Fe Theo know I found their keys. scurry back over to the stairs and call her name, but she looks like she's thinking about something really hard. She must really need these back. I mean, obviously, they are her keys. Theo? Hmm? Oh, sorry. I was lost in thought. If you had any luck, please say you found them. I can. Luck has nothing to do with it. Does that mean you found my keys? Yes, here. I think my lucky star. Hey. Okay, now you're doing it on purpose. <laughs> Luck isn't real. Thank you, Fluffy Panda. Ready for that ride? Yeah, but I was wondering. Oh yes. Seems like your bike has been on your mind all night, didn't? But you didn't mention it sooner. Well, I. Yes. It just seems like something you're really passionate about. She pauses, her face turning a deep purple as she nervously fidgets with her keys. Oh, thank you. Yes, I am, but I don't know if I'm being truthful. Sometimes it feels like that's all people see, but at the same time, I love my bike. I guess. He goes quiet for a moment, searching for the right words. I wanted to make a connection tonight without relying on it. She sighs, trying to regain her thought. You already have. I didn't know you had a sexy motorcycle when I came up to talk to you. You're really awesome, Theo. You're full under pressure and brave and... 
And you fought a werewolf. I'm really glad I met you tonight. Wow, uh, thank you. I'm glad fate brought us together tonight, too. So what do you think? Finally ready for that ride? You're sure you're okay with it? Yes. I'd like to share this with you. I nod as Theo takes my hand and we walk toward the front door and out to the chill autumn air. The dim porch light flickers with a colorless buzz against the dark night as she leads me across the empty street. We move past a few cars on the curb and park between them as a deep black motorcycle with a small golden logo on the side. She's a classic now, but I've had her with me for decades. She and I walk over to it, still hand in hand. Quite a beauty, isn't she? My own little black shadow. Man! So I didn't get the good ending with the other two. I have to replay those. God dang it. Okay, Theo's best girl because I got to her best ending. Theo, yeah, she's gorgeous. Thank you. She's pretty old, but she's my favorite. Wow, how old is it? Hmm, it's hard to say. I wasn't the original owner. I might have liberated her from a less savory fellow back in 1952. You stole it? Yes. From a shitty old man? Yes. That's so cool. I need you to know. It means a lot to hear you say that, Fluffy Panda. Theo smiles as she throws me her spare helmet and starts fiddling with something on that side. You're not gonna wear a helmet? I don't have much use for it. Oh, oh, right, sorry. She straddles the bike, pulling a lever in the front and kicking it to life with a powerful, resonant roar of the engine. Are you ready? Yes! I hastily shove the helmet over my head as I try to balance myself on the back of the bike. I nearly fall off, but I manage to clumsily cling to Theo's waist before the worst of it. Are you alright? Yes, absolutely. Never better than right here. Right now in this moment. She smirks before jerking the bike into the empty street, pausing to let the roar of the engine pour over her as we finally ride out into the night. We drive for a while back before we ride back at Begadi Street. Her house nearly empty by the time we return. Ah, oh, never mind. Never mind, I probably got the good ending soon. I see Ash hurry down from the perch as we pull into the driveway. Hey, you two. Did you have fun? Theo brings the bike to a stop as she hits the kickstand back to the ground, giving Ash a small wave as she turns off the ignition. Y yeah! It was really cool. Thanks again, Theo. I'm glad you enjoyed it. It was the least I could do to repay you. She holds up her keys and jingles them in the air. Oh, yeah, don't worry about it. Maybe we can do this again sometime. Ash, Fluffy Panda, I'll be seeing you. Yeah, dude. See ya. Flashing me his final smile before taking off into the night. And I couldn't help but feel strange as she disappeared. I wish we'd gotten the opportunity to talk more tonight. Well, maybe next time. The end for now. Okay, yeah, okay. I did get the- I think I got the best ends with all the characters then. She just had a little bit extra at the end. Like, uh, Danny with her friends and... Yeah, that's awesome. I love that. We'll definitely check out a sequel. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Sorry for the encoding overload. If it looks really bad, I apologize about that. But, thanks for watching as always, guys. And thank you, the creators, for making this game. I thoroughly enjoyed this. Bye!